All right, welcome back AP Stats students who have a TI-89 graphing calculator. Uh, yeah, we're gonna take a look at the TI-89 and how we use it for the uh, stuff that we're doing here in chapter three. So any of the calculations and stuff that we've been doing in chapter three, I know the, the video for class, the, the formulas weren't working quite right and that's all okay. We're not really gonna need them because uh, we'll be using calculators or computers for all the, for all the computations. Uh, that we're going to need for like R values and stuff like that. So uh, let's head on over to the calculator and let's take a look and, and I'll show you a few things. A reminder that the data set that we're going to be using today is on page 145. So if you want to follow along with the data set, uh, you might want to grab your book and get it open to page 145. All right, let's check out the calculator. All right, here we are. Um, I've got myself a, a two list situation now because in chapter three, we're dealing with bivariate data, meaning that there's an X and a Y coordinate for each data point. Uh, and so it's really important that when you enter the data in that the corresponding X and Y parts are listed on the same line for the, for the list. So like the 120 pound hiker has a 26 pound pack, 187 pound hiker has a 30 pound pack and so on and so forth. Got to keep those organized and together. Otherwise, it'll throw everything off when we go to put this on a graph. Uh, my explanatory variable, if you remember, right, we're trying to explain how much their pack weighs by using the, the pack weight. In other words, uh, as a response variable. So pack weight's response, weight of the hiker is explanatory. And uh, let's take a look at, at how we make a scatter plot first. So that was one of the things that we were talking about um, in, the, in there the other day in class. And so let's take a look. Uh, I'm going to go to F2 again. That's where I do all my plots um, in the stats list editor. And I'm going to go to my plot setup here, plot setup. And I see that I still have some plots that I was using before. So I'm going to go ahead and clear them off. I use F3 to clear off the plots that I don't want. So I'm just going to clear those two out of there because that's not what I want this time around. And uh, I'm going to define. So I'm on line one there, plot one. So I got F1. And it's already set for a scatter plot. That's the default uh, plot. So all I have to do is tell it what X is for my explanatories. Well, that's list one, L-I-S-T one. This time I do need to enter a Y value because it's list two, L-I-S-T two. And I'm gonna hit okay. Ah, before I hit okay, actually, uh, I just re remembered this. Uh, look in the lower left-hand corner of your calculator. Do you see stat bars down there? Hopefully you do. Um, if you see main down there, you might wanna hold off here, shut your calculator down and restart the program. Make sure that you are using the stat bars folder uh, for this exercise. Uh, it's pretty important that you're in stat bars. All right, there we go. I've got my X and Y list. And when I hit F5, it'll zoom my data. And there it is, just like we saw uh, on the video for the week 10 uh, classwork. You can see all my different uh, points. You can see the one that we were thinking, hmm, what's going on with this guy down here? Maybe that's an outlier down there. And everything's looking pretty good. So uh, last Thursday or Friday, depending on when I had you in class, um, or if you're watching this um, the same week of class, week 10, uh, you know we talked about the correlation coefficient R. So let me show you how to find the correlation coefficient R uh, on your TI-89 calculator. And while I'm at it, um, since this video is gonna be for all of chapter three, we're gonna talk about linear regression models. Uh, how do we come up with a linear regression model for a data set? And so for that, I'm gonna actually jump over to a whiteboard really quickly. And uh, when you were in algebra class, okay, so uh, you've all at least had a, a algebra two success um, some of you have gone on, I know that. Um, but if I said, what's the equation of a line, you would have said this, y equals mx plus b. That's pretty much what everybody says when I say, what's the equation of a line? And you're not wrong, that is the equation of a line. Um, the problem is statisticians, well, what can I say? We're a little bit different. Um, we redesigned the equation of a line. I know, why would we do that? Well, uh, there's some reasons behind it, but basically, um, when we make what's called a prediction equation, a, a linear equation for a prediction equation, uh, we have what's on the left here, our response variable, okay, with, and you see I have a hat over it, that we call that y hat, okay, equals a plus bx, and x is the explanatory variable, y is the response variable over there. So yeah, I know, it's 
like, well, what's the diff? Um, and, and there is really no difference. So it shouldn't be a big deal for you. If you uh, are used to Y equals MX plus B, you can get used to A plus BX. Um, the hat uh, on the Y tells you that you are doing a prediction equation uh, and it's indicating that it's from a sample. So uh, important to remember that this is a sample statistic line here. Uh, and we'll get more into that uh, in the video for uh, week 11's classes. So I won't belabor that point too much right here. Just know that um, when we do this, we're going to have A plus BX as the linear regression model that we're after. Okay. Let's go back to the, uh, go back to the uh, document camera here and we'll see uh, how we do that here. So let's get back to the stats program. Okay. So here we are. And what I want you to see uh, on your menu choices is we're going to go to F4 again, like we did for earlier calculations. And now you'll see choice number three is your regressions. Okay, there's lots and lots of regressions that you can do. Okay, but for us, we want a linear model. That is the most common uh, model that we're going to make. And so we're going to do linear regression model. And you notice there's two choices. There's A plus BX, and there's AX plus B. Choose A plus BX so that you're consistent with the, with the rest of the world. All right. And we're going to store, I'm sorry, we're going to have our uh, X variable be list one. We're going to have our Y list, that's our response list, be list two. And on this third line down here, you can see I've already got store equation. Okay, it's store regression equation is what that's short for. It says store, store reg or reg equation to um, if you push the right arrow there, you can choose any one of your Y variables to store it. I, I'm going to just use Y1, but you can pick any one. Um, I know it defaults to none when you first got here, probably said none. Um, but we want to store the equation because we want the calculator to save all this work we're about to do. Okay, well, okay, let's be honest. All the work it's about to do, let's save it. Uh, now we'll just go down and hit enter. So we're ready to go. And boom, we got Y hat, now it should have a hat on it, but they couldn't put a hat on the screen, so, uh, is uh, A, which is 16.265 plus 0 0.0908, I guess, if we're rounding four decimal places, X. So there's the, the slope is B, the A is the y-intercept for a linear model that fits our data, okay? And uh, for last week or, or, or this week, depending on which week you're watching this video, uh, you see that there's an R squared, that's for week 11. So we'll talk about that in class. Um, but there's also R, the correlation coefficient R. Uh, and that's the one that tells us, you know, how well do these data points line up on the line? It measures the strength of our linear relationship. And you can see this is almost a 0.8 correlation. That's pretty high. That's moderately strong, positive linear correlation. So looks pretty good I'm like yeah we're doing a pretty good job of, of the with this prediction okay i'm gonna hit enter it's gonna go away and it, it's gonna create some new lists for you okay you'll have a list called z score and then probably another one called resid don't worry about what those mean right now um it's coming it'll it'll be uh it'll be uh, coming to you either on the 16th or the 17th depending on what day you have class I will talk a little bit more, and, it, and uh, if not on one of those two days, then it'll be the 19th or the 20th of this month. So you're going to understand what those are soon. Uh, what I want to show you is if you go back to the graph, and I'm going to actually take a small detour on the way. Uh, I'm going to go to where it says Y equals up here on F1, because I want to show you why I, what I put that Y1 in there. It stored the equation for the linear model right here on Y1. You can see the whole linear models right here. So that's how, that's why I did that. So it would be saved here. And now when I go to graph, so see in green here, it says graph on F3. I'm gonna go function and then F3. Here's our scatter plot with the addition of the regression line. How nice is that? Right through there, looks pretty good. Okay, and now you get to see that, yeah, for a, a regression cor correlation coefficient of 0.8, that's what it looks like. Now I know there's these two dots at the end that are off the pattern and we had already identified this guy over here as a, as a potential outlier maybe. And I know we haven't talked about it yet um, when I'm making this video, 
Um, so if you're watching this video before we've talked about it, don't worry, it's coming up. We will talk about how to determine if there's outliers or not in a bivariate data set. It's unfortunate because there's no simple equations like there were for univariate data set. We could just use two keys equations. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't exist for bivariate data. That's okay. Um, we'll, we'll take you through how to figure out if there's an outlier or not uh, later on. So there you have it. Uh, that's how to uh, come up with a scatter plot, how to compute your line of best fit or your regression line, and how to come up with your correlation value, R and R squared. So pretty much everything we would need to compute for chapter three, uh, right here in this little video right here. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, get out those TI-89s. And again, if you want to follow along with this video, rewind, go back, go through it again whatever you need to do, uh, the data set, you'll find it on page 145 in your textbook. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching.